students, this is your AM ma'am and today we are going to begin with the text, The Summit Within. Let's move on. This is not just any story. In this story, Major Haripal Singh Aluwalia documents his own experience when he climbed the Mount Everest. Now, who was this man? To know about his experiences, to feel what he went through, I think it's absolutely important for all of us to first know this man, isn't it? Let us look at this slide and we can see all about his achievements. Major Haripal Singh Aluwalia, he was born on the 6th of November in 1936. He is an Indian mountaineer, author, social worker, retired Indian Army officer. All these things, one person. During his career, he has made contributions in the fields of adventure, sports, environment, disability and social work. He is not just any man. He is a man with a wonderful life and lot of achievements. As you can see, I have a slide for you. Take your time and go through it. Well, I'm sure you have all glanced at it. Now let's move forward. Okay? Let's dive into the text. The summit within. Alright. Let's see what it has to say in the before you read portion. Major HPS Aluwalia was a member of the first successful Indian expedition to Mount Everest in 1965. How did he feel when he stood on the highest point in the world? Let us hear his story in his words. Climbing the summit and then the more difficult task of climbing the summit within. Alright? Let's begin. Of all the emotions which surged through me as I stood on the summit of Everest looking over miles of panorama below us, the dominant one I think was humility. What does he mean by saying this? When he was standing on the peak that is the summit of Mount Everest, the dominant feeling that is the most important feeling at that moment that he felt was not he wasn't feeling very proud he wasn't feeling that he has accomplished something bigger than life and he is the most important person of the world no on the contrary he felt completely humble very very modest humility okay the physical in me seemed to say thank god it's all over the physical in me, that is his body. The climb to Mount Everest is extremely difficult. So difficult that many people lose their lives on the way. And some people also lose their lives while coming down. So it's a big deal. It's a very, very big deal. And the body is exhausted to its ultimate limit. So of course, the physical part, it was telling, thank God, it's all over. However, Instead of being jubilant, there was a tinge of sadness. Jubilant means being very, very happy in a celebratory mood. There was a tinge of sadness. Why? Let's see. Was it because I had already done the ultimate in climbing and there would be nothing higher to climb and all roads hereafter would lead down? What does he say? Now, all these years, he had this dream that he is going to climb Mount Everest and that dream pushed him forward continuously. It gave him an encouragement. But now that he has already climbed Mount Everest, there is nowhere to go up. He is on the peak now. From the peak, what will he do? He is not going to grow wings and fly higher up. That's not possible. He has to walk down. That's where he feels a little sad that from this particular peak, now the road leads downwards. So I will not be climbing up anymore. Rather, I'll be climbing down. Okay? And I had done, he says, I had already done the ultimate in climbing. 
ultimate in climbing we all know that mount everest is the highest so when major aluwalia climbed mount everest when he reached the peak that means he has reached the topmost mountain in the world which all the mountaineers dream of okay so that's the ultimate reaching point from now onwards wherever he climbs after this it will not be as high as everest and standing on the peak of everest his journey will be now downwards okay let's move on by climbing the summit of everest you are overwhelmed by a deep sense of joy and thankfulness overwhelmed by a deep sense of joy of course emotionally you have this wonderful sense of joy of this achievement of being able to conquer something that is actually larger than life climbing to the top defeating all obstacles and reaching there you are absolutely overwhelmed you are very very happy and there is this feeling of pure joy and thankfulness he is still alive this journey is very very dangerous he is still alive that is why he is thankful it is a joy which lasts a lifetime this is not something that is uh, i am happy right now and after some time the happiness vanishes no this experience is an enriching experience and it is going to be with him for as long as he lives the experience changes you completely the man who has been to the mountains is never the same again why does he say this climbing a mountain of course it is a very difficult task and then climbing down equally difficult but why does he say that it changes a man completely let's go in further into the story and see what he has to say as i look back at life after climbing everest i cannot help remarking about the other summit the summit of the mind no less formidable and no easier to climb okay children when we take up a decision to do something very very difficult first we have to conquer the fear the peak the summit of our mind we have to reach that we have to defeat the fear within us only then we can take the decision of conquering the dangers that lie in the physical world for us any person who wants to climb the everest will not just decide in one moment and do it the next day it's a very very lengthy process first one has to get prepared mentally emotionally and then yes i can do it you have to first climb the summit within and then you can start your journey for climbing the summit of mount everest all right no less formidable and no easier to climb what is the meaning of the word formidable terrifying and not at all easy to climb often we become very very sad and often we think what if this what if that and our mind mostly controls us we are slaves of our minds we should not let it always control us we should have that power we should be able to be on the peak of our mind we must control the fear in our minds only then anything is possible isn't it okay let's move on even when getting down from the summit once the physical exhaustion had gone i began asking myself the question why i had climbed everest why did the act of reaching the summit have such a hold on my imagination he keeps on saying that when he was getting down from the summit once the physical exhaustion that is of course he is not going to be tired forever he was extremely tired he was dog tired but once the physical exhaustion is over after relaxing sleep and after relaxing for a long time and then sleeping and napping now finally he is fresh he is not tired anymore he asks himself why did i climb everest i began asking myself the question why i had climbed everest why did the act of reaching the summit have such a hold on my imagination before he climbed the summit he had this 
wild push in him. I have to reach the summit. I have to climb Mount Everest. It is something that I have to do. This was a very, very wild imagination, children, because it is not just a small hill somewhere here and there. It's Mount Everest we are talking about, isn't it? So climbing Mount Everest could also mean dying while trying to climb. In spite of that, he had this, I will climb Mount Everest. And so he wanted to ask himself, why did I do it? It was already a thing of the past, something done yesterday. Meaning, he had climbed Mount Everest, now he has come back. So it is something in the past that is done yesterday. With every passing day, it would become more and more remote. Why? Of course, what I have done today is fresh today. It's in the present. It will become past next day, that is tomorrow. And five years from now, it is going to be something that has gone far, far in the past. It is going to be something very, very remote, far away, isn't it? And then what would remain? Would my memories fade slowly away? He questions himself. What will happen then? Will all the memories that drove him till then, all the encouragement, all his energy, all his enthusiasm to climb Mount Everest, what will happen? The memories that those fresh memories of climbing Mount Everest on the day itself, when he came down, after two days also, what will happen to those memories after 10 years? Will they all slowly fade away? He is thinking about this. Now let's see what he has to say about that. All these thoughts led me to question myself as to why people climb mountains. Why? What is the reason behind climbing mountains? Uh, I could just sit in my sofa with a cup of hot coffee and watch a good movie. But no, I have to risk my life. For months on end, I'll be somewhere dry, rugged lands. I will not be able to breathe properly. I have to climb Mount Everest. Why do people do this? That's his question. Well, it is not easy to answer the question. The simplest answer would be, as others have said, because it is there. The mountain is there as if the mountain is calling. Those who are nature lovers, those who climb, they know what this call is. Not everybody will understand, but those of you who actually love mountains, you will see there is this call of the nature. It calls you the mountains and you cannot rest. You become so restless until and unless you actually embark upon the journey. It presents great difficulties. Of course it does, as I told you before. Man takes delight in overcoming obstacles. Now, this is a very, very important thing. Of course, we all know that if there is something in front of us that is hard, it gives us pleasure when we are able to overcome that, isn't it? Those of you who love playing games, we all do. Even I play games at times. So, it's not something that we don't do. Until and unless I'm able to cross a level, there is this weird drive in me. I have to cross this level. I have to cross this level. And once I'm able to cross the level, as if I have achieved something. I don't know what I have achieved, but there is this sense of achievement. Similarly, whatever obstacles lie in front of us, man takes delight in overcoming them. The obstacles in climbing a mountain are physical. Yes, because you have to climb your whole body continuously needs to be super active. It is super physical work. A climb to a summit means endurance, persistence and willpower. What is endurance? Power to tolerate. Tolerating, you have to have that power to tolerate. Persistence, keep on going no matter what. The tenacity, persistence is the tenacity. I will keep on going no matter what. And willpower inside of you, that voice that keeps on guiding you like the North Star. It shows you the path. It keeps on telling you, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it and you will do it. That's your willpower talking to you. The demonstration of these physical qualities is no doubt exhilarating as it was for me also. Exhilarating here. Very, very exciting, extremely exhilarating. 
of course i am able to climb the mountain i am being able to endure all the difficulties i am being able to persist i am continuously showing tenacity and my will power i am i can i will all these things it's exhilarating if i am able to do it and finally the reason why i was doing it for climbing the mountain for reaching the summit i have reached it and now i have come down so it's a great achievement it's a wonderful feeling there is something more to it let's see i have a more personal answer to the question from my childhood i have been attracted by mountains what question that is why do people take such journeys that question and for that question people may say because it is there as he has told over here it is written because it is there but for major aluwalia it was different he took it in a personal way just let us see what he has to say from my childhood i have been attracted by mountains i had been miserable lost when away from mountains in the plains that is when he is not in the hilly area he feels lost aimless he is miserable just like fish out of water mountains give him that life that breath that oxygen that one needs to live without going in the hilly area he is completely lost mountains are nature at its best of course it's magnificent huge beautiful creations of god they are nature at its best their beauty and majesty pose a great challenge and like many i believe that mountains are a means of communion with god these are majestic formations beautiful and they just don't stand there as if if a person is able to climb a mountain and reach the top for major aluwalia that is a journey and after reaching the peak it becomes a communion with god it is more of a spiritual experience as if he is able to feel the existence of god and realize that god is everywhere through the difficulties when he goes it's a challenge but when he wins the challenge when he reaches there and he feels that now finally he is with god it's a wonderful experience that he talks about once having granted this the question remains why everest why everest there are many other mountains because it is the highest the mightiest and has defied many previous attempts not everybody who wants to climb everest is able to climb it and even those who have attempted to climb everest have reached the summit there are many 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 people who have tried and failed more than once many many times so that is why it is something that is not easily achievable something very very difficult so when something is not easily achievable people as human beings we have this thing we want that that is not easily achievable isn't it it takes the last ounce of one's energy ounce it's a unit approximately 28 grams it's a unit whatever energy you have it will take it it will squeeze out that last ounce of energy from you mentally physically emotionally everywhere you are going to feel that will i be able to do it i am out of energy it will take it from you that's the journey so you have to prepare for it much much before actually when you embark the journey it's a brutal struggle with rock and ice of course it's rocky full of ice very oxygen level is very low it's a very very difficult struggle once taken up it cannot be given up halfway even when one's life is at stake meaning once you have embarked upon the journey there is no looking back the only way to look is to look forward to keep on moving keeping the summit as your aim the passage back is as difficult as the passage onwards mr aluwalia climbs the mountain very very difficult very very difficult once he has reached the summit he is all very happy and and joyful but that's not the end of it that's just half of it because coming down is going to be equally difficult many people have lost their lives while coming down too until and unless he reaches the base camp danger is lurking all around him and then when the summit is climbed there is the exhilaration the joy 
of having done something. The sense of a battle fought and won. Of course, it's a sense of a battle, a battle with nature, a battle with yourself, a battle with everything around you. Everything around you is so difficult. We are saying you will not be able to do the rock, the snow, the ice, the low oxygen. Everything is against you. So you're fighting your way through. And then when you reach, it's a battle that you have won. There is a feeling of victory and of happiness. Glimpsing a peak in the distance, I get transported to another world. I experience a change within myself. He's on the journey and then when he finally sees the peak, when he, after glimpsing the peak, he feels that he has been transported to another world, a world where everything is beautiful. As if he has already reached the peak in his imagination. Though he has to physically go there, he has already been transported into another world, a completely different world. Let's see what he has to say. I experience a change within myself, which can only be called mystical. Mystical means spiritual. You do remember that uh, Major Aluwalia said that mountains are the way of communion with God. So after seeing the peak, he feels everything around him has become so beautiful. Nature has become so beautiful. Even though it is rocky, it's full of ice, there is hardly any oxygen. He needs to carry the oxygen canisters with him. He needs to breathe. He can't breathe properly. But he feels that he has been transported into a world where he doesn't need the oxygen to breathe anymore. He feels a special connection with God. He has feelings of spirituality in him. He feels that it is a complete different world. And the only emotional feeling that he gets at that moment is his connection with God. A spiritual upliftment, he feels. By its beauty, aloofness, might, ruggedness and the difficulties encountered on the way, the peak draws me to it. It's beauty, aloofness, it's remote, it's not friendly, it's not beautiful lush green. It's very very aloof, unfriendly type of a thing. Might, that is very very huge strong mountains, mighty strong ones, rugged, rocky and full of eyes and the difficulties encountered on the way. While walking, it's not going to be a smooth path. He may fall, he has to pave his way. Every step that he takes, he has to pave it for him. There is nothing ready for him to walk on. No beautiful roads. It's very, very difficult. The peak draws me to it. In spite of all these, the peak draws him. He feels a special connection with God over there. It is a different kind of a scenario. As Everest did. So, for him, why did he climb Everest? Not because it is there, just like the others say. Because he felt this connection with God in spite of all these difficulties. It is a challenge that is difficult to resist. The journey is very, very difficult, but more difficult is to resist the journey. So, Major Aluwalia embarked upon it and he reached the summit. Looking back, I find that I have not yet fully explained why I climbed Everest. All along that we have been discussing about Major Aluwalia's experience, he feels that whatever he has told us so far, he has not yet explained clearly and fully why he climbed Everest. It is like answering a question, why you breathe? Why do you help your neighbor? Why do you want to do good acts? There is no final answer possible. Now children, if I ask you, why do you breathe? Ma'am, we breathe because we have to live. If I stop breathing, how can I live? Why do you help your neighbor? Why do you do good acts? Ma'am, we help our neighbors or we do good acts because we are human beings. Human beings look out for each other. That's what we do. There is no final answer, isn't it? Why do you do it? Well, uh, I breathe because I'm a human being. So what? Why do you breathe? There is no final answer. And then there is the fact that Everest is not just a physical climb. 
you have to prepare yourself mentally first you have to reach the summit once you are able to reach the summit of your mind only then can you prepare yourself for the journey that is the physical journey the man who has been to the mountain top becomes conscious in a special manner of his own smallness in this large universe uh, i don't know if any of you have ever climbed even a small hill and looking down you will see everything around you is so huge so big and in comparison to it you are so so small so similarly the man who climbs on the top of the mountain he becomes conscious in a special manner standing over there he feels that he is really really small in this large universe in this big universe he is just a small person the physical conquest of a mountain is only one part of the achievement that is to be able to conquer the journey to reach the summit is just one part there is more to it than that it is followed by a sense of fulfillment it's very 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 exhausting going there risking your life it's just a part of it but once you're able to reach there there is a sense of fulfillment as if you have done something you feel complete you feel complete that there is sense of completion a journey that you had begun is now complete a sense of fulfillment of satisfaction there is the satisfaction of a deep urge to rise above one's surroundings rising above one's surroundings mean everyday things that we do they are very normal every one of us all of us have to do these everyday things like normal things that the common mass does eating drinking sleeping going out of the going out to the shops or buying this reading normal things these are your normal surroundings going out to the road in front of you but after reaching the summit there is this deep urge in you to rise above everything everything that is going around they all become petty in comparison to what you have achieved over there standing over there you feel that the whole world is so big you are so small and you have actually risen above all those things around you you are standing there there is this rise there is this urge of rising above everything that is normal things around you everything around you you have risen above it is the eternal love for adventure in man the experience is not merely physical it is emotional it is spiritual man has this um it's called wanderlust we have heard of it wanderlust that is man has this eternal love for adventure man always wants to go out and discover new things discover new places eternal love for adventure so the experience is not merely physical when you are able to actually reach the top all the difficulties path full of difficulties and danger yet conquering them overcoming all those when you are able to reach there of course you have done it with this body of yours you have done it with major aluwalia when he reached the summit it was his body it but it was not only physical it was beyond that it is emotional he says it is spiritual he says because the body is driven by the mind if i start thinking i cannot do my body won't move my body listens to me so it is an emotional experience a spiritual experience after reaching there consider a typical climb towards the summit on the last heights you are sharing a rope with another climber just he is uh, saying something during climbing one person is at front holding a rope other person is just behind him holding the other end of the rope it's a long list many people they climb like this those who know about it you know it very well how it happens you form in what is the meaning of you form in that is make yourself firm you hold the rope tightly he cuts the steps in hard ice that is he is paving the way for you he cuts the steps in the hard ice and then you follow him then he belays and you inch your way up after cutting the ice and making the way he fixes the rope for you and then you hold the rope and you move on 
you inch your way up that is inch by inch you make your way up the climb is grim very very serious grim means serious you strain every nerve as you take every step every nerve of your body is under pressure as you move it is very very strenuous famous climbers have left records of the help given by others those who are very very famous climbers they have given their journals how they have climbed what they have they have given all types of notes this might happen that might happen so they have left their journals for people who are going to climb they have also recorded how they needed just that help let's imagine you are going to a place you know that it is dangerous but you know nothing of it so it is going to be a difficult task for you but again imagine you are going to this place many many people have been to that place yes you know it's very very dangerous yet those people they have left journals of their experiences they have also given advice over there in such situations this can be done in such situations you should do this avoid this do this do that so it becomes much more easier for you so they say it also that they have said it they have recorded how they needed just that help the information from beforehand else they might have given up and that information that they got from the famous climbers actually helped them so much that maybe without the information they may have just given up and returned so they are so thankful to those famous climbers breathing is difficult why is breathing difficult we all know we need oxygen to breathe and the level of oxygen over there is very very low you have to carry oxygen cans oxygen tanks over there with you so of course breathing is going to be difficult you curse yourself for having let yourself in for this you curse yourself why did i take the decision of climbing mount everest what am i a fool see how i am going through now will i even make it will i survive maybe i will die why did i do it i could have sat back home and relaxed on my armchair and looked at a beautiful scenery outside my window what am i doing over here you keep on cursing yourself you shouldn't have taken this journey but again you wonder why you ever undertook the ascent that is why you ever took the journey the climb there are moments when you feel like going back and after climbing for some time when it becomes very 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 difficult and you cannot take it anymore you think these kinds of things you think you want to go back no not any more you cannot take any more you feel like going back it would be sheer relief to go down instead of up it would be completely relaxing to go down climbing up too much of energy too much of oxygen so much of uh, things to carry on the back to move on cutting the ice holding the rope everything is so very difficult you feel like going down it would be sheer relief complete relief just to go down but almost at once you snap out of the mood immediately you come out of that mood you get out of that mood snap out of it what what am i thinking no i can't think like this i have to move forward there is something in you that does not let you give up the struggle you keep on struggling with your mind your brain and your mind they are fighting they are struggling but immediately after some time you snap out of it you come out of it and you don't give up you move forward so let's move forward and you go on your companion keeps up with you just another 50 feet or a 100 maybe you ask yourself is there no end you look at your companion and he looks at you you draw inspiration from each other and then without first being aware of it you are at the summit so mental struggles going on i cannot do it i will have to do it and then suddenly what am i thinking i have to do it and i can't think like this and i'm going going i look at my companion so you are looking at your companion he is looking at you and looking at your companion go you take inspiration from him and your companion looking at you go takes inspiration from you so you draw inspiration from each other and you keep thinking okay he is doing it i'll be able to do it too and then 100 feet or oh, maybe 50 feet you keep on saying because when the distance seems smaller it is easier for you to think that yes i can do it if you have to like oh my god 
thousand feet. How will I do? But instead, if you think maybe only fifty feet, maybe only hundred feet, yes, yes, I can do it. So the moment you think the distance to be smaller, it is easier for you to keep on moving. Okay, and then what happens? Without first being aware of it, and suddenly you are looking at him. He is looking at you, and suddenly you see the peak. The peak comes in front of you. You are at the summit. You have reached the summit.